Hello, this is Hi Dolber. The date is March 1st, 1993. I've had a number of requests from friends and business associates for tapes and or recordings of my harmonica playing. There has always been, I have found, a curious fascination with people who entertain, play musical instruments, and particularly those like myself, who actually made a living at it. This fascination seems to be substantially more curious when it comes to the lowly mouth organ, a seemingly silly little toy instrument that most people identify with country music and rock bands. In October of this year, I've been continuously employed at First Investors for 38 years. I have served as a sales supervisor, assistant branch manager, co-manager, top club producer, and in 1976, I created for the company the Broker Dealer Marketing Division, which I currently direct and accounts for nearly 25% of sales. And yet, within our company, if you mention Hi Dolber, you will get, oh yes, the harmonica player who entertained 10 years in a row in the company's annual conventions. My involvement as an entertainer spans a period of about 25 years, from early appearances on the Major Bowes Original Amateur Hour, resulting in several summer seasons on the road with traveling units of performers who had appeared on the CBS radio show. Frank Sinatra, Teresa Brewer, and Rose Marie are many of those with whom we traveled and who got their start in this way. We subsequently appeared at the 1939 World's Fair in Flushing in an amateur show, which we didn't win but we were picked up by a producer of a kitty show on NBC radio. By 1942, we had adopted the name The Four Polka Dots and were broadcast six times a week on our own 15-minute musicals. Theater appearances at Broadway presentation houses such as Radio City Music Hall, the Roxy Capitol and Paramount Theater followed. We did early television shows and made numerous recordings and transcriptions for the NBC Thesaurus Music Library. It seemed we were really on the way to starting, and then came the war. You know, WW2. Now, I'll have you know I was a very patriotic kid in those days. I was not about to capitalize on my showbiz experience to get a cushy job in special services, no siree. So I enlisted in the Signal Corps, and after a year of technical training as a high-speed radio operator, I was sent overseas to the China-Burma-India area. Never sent the message, nary a dit or a dog, but was assigned to the motor pool to drive trucks. But once again, if you entertain, somehow they find you. I played the true ships going overseas and for the Red Cross ladies when I got there. On one such appearance, who should walk up to me with Major's insignia on his lapels but the famous movie actor, Melvin Douglas. How'd you like to work for me, he says. Sure, I replied, anything's better than KP and driving that damn 6x6 six six truck. And so for nearly two years, with Major Melvin Douglas as my commanding officer of the 40th Special Service Company, I crisscrossed the CBI covering hundreds of thousands of miles in numerous all GI entertainment units. We sometimes would take a jeep up the Burma Road and wherever we found six guys in an outpost, we did a show. It was quite an experience. While in India, I met an Air Force sergeant by the name of Manny Lipkin, who turned out to be a top harmonica player. And when I returned home in 1946, he was waiting for me, ready to go to work. The other polka dots have since gone into other fields, and so Manny and I uh, adopted the polka dots name and added electronic harmonicas and worked together for the next 15 years. Now, much of the original polka dots pre-war music has unfortunately been lost, but what I have preserved 
are some unusual transcriptions and commercial recordings from a post-war polka dots repertoire. This first transcription is that of the Arthur Godfrey Talent Scout show. Now, this was about 1947, and of course, pre-television, meaning radio. Now, Arthur Godfrey hated harmonicas and harmonica players, and we could never get him to give us an audition. In spite of the fact that we had the entire audition staff, who incidentally he had inherited from the Major Bowes Amateur Hour, rooting for us. Well, he finally relented, and we got on. Now, I know we were not supposed to win. You kind of get that feeling when Arthur hugged the father of one of the other contestants at the rehearsal, allocated a half hour of rehearsal time to him and only five minutes to us, and various other little tunes. The voice of our talent scout is that of Francis Turner, wife of our agent at the time. So here now is the Arthur Godfrey Talent Scout Show in 1947. 